Hello, welcome to Fake News Show. I'm your host, Frank Donga. And you know how they do am? We they do am on this show. We tell you everything about fake news, disinformation, and misinformation, how to identify it, how to avoid it, how to recognize it, and all that. Fasten your seatbelt and join us on this ride of fake news show. We'll take a short break and we'll come back. I'm going to be talking about fake news or misinformation and disinformation as it concerns the social media bill and the law. Yes, on this episode of Fake News Show, social media bill and the law. Don't go anywhere. Call your friends. Let's go on this ride together. Fake News. Welcome back, fake news show. That's what you're watching. Social media bill in Nigeria and the law. Senator Mohammed Sani Musa from the Niger uh, East Senatorial District proposed a bill in 2019 called the Protection from Internet Falsehood and Manipulation Bill. That bill, amongst other things, empowers the federal government to unilaterally shut down internet use in Nigeria or instruct an internet service provider to shut down. And if you are found wanting or guilty of spreading falsehood or misinformation on social media, you can pay as much as 300,000 Naira if you're an individual or if you're a corporate organization, 10 million Naira. A lot of people have spoken out against this bill because they believe it's an infringement of the freedom of expression and that it can be misused by the ruling class or the political class, political class to gag citizens. That's what we're here to talk about, the social media bill and the law when it comes to fake news. Without a doubt, a lot of uh, good things happen on social media. It has provided employment, provided information, access to, to research, to education. A lot of people have learned things on social media. A lot of youth have found themselves on social media, doing comedy sketches, expressing themselves, learning coding, meeting people. A lot happens. And the political class, too, has used social media effectively during elections for campaigns. Unfortunately, some things that are not too desirable happen. Hate speech, uh, inciting people to violence, uh, and many other negative things. But that is what we're looking at now. Balancing the two together, social media bill and the law. That's what we're going to talk about. Before we do that, let's listen to what people are saying on the street. We have a special guest who's going to discuss this topic with us. He's a human rights activist and lawyer. And just before then, let's go on the street first. We'll go see which people they talk. On matter, we're concerned this kind of thing. We'll be right back after this break. Comes as a kind of a lie against a personality. So it may destroy a personality if uh, it's being carried out in that kind of manner. You know, when, when, when you just bring out information for the purpose of uh, destroying the personality, it has a personality effect on the character and content of a, a, an individual. You verify information before before you act on it. Not jumping on anything you see on the social media. Any information you get, you have to verify it. We have various means of verifying information before you act on it. Every person is a fundamental human right for you to air your views. But while you are air, airing your views, do not encroach on the rights of other people. Don't say something about them that is not true. Welcome back, guys. It's fake news show. We just come back from the street, too. Oh. You hear it people talk, so? Oh. <laughs> hey, Hilly Lily. What's your thought on it? You think the same thing? Have a different mindset. You want to share your thoughts? Reach out to us at CDD West Africa on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Send us a message, send us a, send us a DM, or you just use the hashtag. Stop fake news or hashtag fake news show. Tag me at frankdonga underscore. Lend your voice to this campaign. Let's know what you think. You want to share a story with us? Let's know what you think. All right, we'll be talking about the social media bill and the law when it comes to um, fake news or misinformation and disinformation. Without me wasting much time, let's go to Let's Talk because we have our guest waiting for us. He is Frank Tete. We'll be talking with him on fake news show concerning social media bill and this law. Don't go anywhere, stay with us, we'll be right back.
Welcome, guys. It's Fake News Show, and I'm Frank Donga. You know, Fake News Show will tell you all about misinformation, disinformation, you know, fake news, rumor, all about it. You know, how it affects us, affects the nation, affects community, and we talk about all of other things we discuss on this show. You know, we always bring special guests on this show to talk about this nitty gritty of the matter. Huh? Today, on this episode, we have no one else but a very versatile lawyer and human rights activist, you know, full of energy and wisdom. His name, my name's Sik, Frank Tete. He's, he's a barrister. barrister. And he's here with us in the studio. You're welcome, sir. Thank you, Frank. Very well. My pleasure. In your legal opinion, do you think fake news or misinformation, how can it affect security in a country? I don't think it will affect security if the people who have the responsibility of ensuring security and correct uh, information, truth, do their job. So mischief makers will always be there. They will always want to paint the world the way they see it. Some of them are very, uh, you know, they are very acerbic, they are very negative, so they can say, uh, they, they, they wish, you know, uh, they are very cynical, mm -hmm. so they will wish to see the world in a very, you know, topsy-turvy state of affairs, things are bad, you know, and all that, so they will do their job. But on the other hand, there are persons whose job is to speak the truth, to set, things, set the record straight. So when those whose duty is to set this re uh, record straight fail, then the ones who purvey this negative news will have their way. So we, we, any attempt to stifle these negative uh, uh, news purveyors, these fake news, so to speak, in quote, uh, uh, you, you know, mongers, from doing their job, is just an expression of some persons getting tired of doing the right thing. So allow them to go on. So, but if you say allow them, you know, now the state. Are you telling me about state, the national security? Yeah. Those who should, who are responsible in setting the record straight, mm. will always prevail if they do their job. Is it the responsibility of a state to make sure that lives on security, lives on uh, property are secure by ensuring that other people's rights are not trampled on? There is the fundamental right. It's a fundamental, it's a basic right to education. And it is the duty of the government. Mm. You mentioned the state. The state is there. The state owns the government. The state owns the people. The state owns the land. You know, and it's there. It's a very amorphous and very difficult, uh, you know, uh, concept called the state. Mm. Now, the responsibility of government is welfare and uh, the responsibility of government, responsibility to provide welfare and security for the people. Now, one basic ingredient required for welfare is education. So you fail to educate the children, then Boko Haram will indoctrinate them. That's how it works. So if you educate the children properly with a responsive curriculum, for example, they will be able to report when they hear a negative you know, uh, information or a, neg or a, a negative uh, doctrine that, uh, you know, that is antisocial, like the one that Boko Haram pervade before our very eyes, even in this town. Mm. I've been in this town listening to you know, some of those hardcore, you know, radical you know, religious teachings Right there in area one, when, when, the, when the, the, the constructions were on. And nobody, in fact, they were playing them on speakers, on speakers, loud speakers. You know, so somebody somewhere is just failing. And you see, all of this fear, all of this hula baloo about, you know, fake news and hate speech and, and to social media uh, and then the need to regulate, is because these persons who operate government, not the state, the state, the Nigerian state, it has given us everything that we need to be okay as a people. But the government that's supposed to be working for this state is, is trying to see itself as a state. And then it, the, 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 the people who operate it are becoming tired. They are lacking ideas on how to deliver, I mean, well, they, I mean the good... The, 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 the benefits of good governance to the people and how to secure the people on how to provide for improved, increased living standard of the people. And that's what called welfare. The social media space is very powerful and a lot of us express, have found uh, careers on social media. They have found a voice on social media. But as a lawyer, uh, you don't think uh, we should have boundaries that law should guide? You know, in the social media, and, and hence this social media bill that is. On. Let me tell you. You something. don't think the social media no, bill is the solution? Wait, 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 no, it cannot be the solution. Why? This is it. The man who is publishing news, saying claiming to be publishing news, is not a newspaper like Punch, Observer, or uh, Nation. Mm -hmm. He's just an ordinary person. So you cannot, in the first place, rely on him to have news. So 
the people who can publish fake news mm. are those who have been registered as you know as press houses in the constitution in section 22 they are referred to as the press radio television and newspapers mm. and the rest of them that those are the persons who have the capacity of purveying or publishing or carrying out fake news not the ordinary individual so are you saying you know you know that uh, it, has, it doesn't carry weight because social media, a lot of things happen. Maybe that is what the state is trying to do, to secure you and I, to make sure that nobody causes hullabaloo with their violent speeches. And the speeches. point is this. Any piece of information that causes harm is, 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 a criminal, I mean, is criminalized in, in, by our own uh, you know, jurisprudence, by our own criminal jurisprudence in this country. So do not in any way think that do not be threatened that such a person, one person or such and such a person has so much influence and then he is now, you know, carrying out a particular, I mean, is uh, spreading a particular philosophy or religious teaching that is against the interests of the state. Yeah. Clearly, if it violates the standards of the law, the standards of our criminal law, punish the person. One of the underlying factors on the undertones of the, you know, law, social media bill, is uh, to, to, to ensure sanity, you know, so that you don't have just one schoolboy insulting his father's age mate on Twitter. Probably, you know, stuff like that. Let me tell you something. And that's why we're making a mountain out of a molehill. Mm. If you insult me in a manner that I think that I do not deserve, and that you are taking an unfair advantage of a relationship or a privilege that you had by knowing so much about me, I will sue you for damages. So they are and, and I'm coming absolutely. It goes on beyond our civil process, civil procedure, to even our criminal procedure. I can also report you to the FCT Police Command that this particular information by this individual mm. is of a criminal has a criminal uh, intention, and the damage it has cost me. I mean, demands that the person be prosecuted. So we've seen a situation. Mm. Amechi Anakwe, for example, yeah. was uh, was arrested by uh, Amechi uh, Umbu, for example, yeah. Umbu Joseph Umbu when he was a, a CP in Abuja. The 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 he, the, the charge was in order. It's just that what was not there was that the man had the right to express whatever opinion he had about Joseph Mbu. Mm -hmm. That Joseph Mbu, he was controversial. And Joseph Mbu decided to arrest Amechi Anakwe and put him in, in detention. Meanwhile, he charged him for criminal defamation. Fine. So long as you are a public official, any Nigerian individual can hold any opinion, his opinion about you, and you cannot. Have, I mean, I'm not trying to quit describing Joseph Mbu as controversial. He was perfectly in order. Ladies and gentlemen, it's still a fake news show. I'm Frank Donga. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation as it is hot right now with Barrister Frank Tete. Stay with us. One, two, three. Now I can send these stories to my brother. He must share it with my mother. What are you sending to your aged mother? Come and read. I found these stories on the internet. Wait, did you verify these stories to be sure they are facts? Verify? Why? Have you not heard that it is important for you to always verify stories by doing this five before sharing them? Five things? That's too much for just one story. First, check the headline if it's sensational. Check the new sites that publish it to ensure it's credible. You double check to make sure the same piece has been published by other credible media organizations. Oh, really? Yes, check the dates the story was published and finally seek experts' opinion and possibly advice on the report. Wow, I'll quickly verify these by checking the headline, date, source and seek experts' opinion before I forward them to my brother and mother. This message is brought to you by the Center for Democracy and Development, CDD. You should only share information from credible sources. It's fake news show, guys, and I'm Frank Donga. We've been talking to a special guest we have in the studio with us today on this episode of Fake News, Misinformation, Disinformation, and uh, also the social media view. Yes, we have in the studio Barrister Frank Tete. Uh, thank you for once again for joining us. So just before the break, we were talking about the effects of fake news on security and how uh, people have uh, uh, the human rights, the basic uh, rights to express themselves and how fake news might be reality, you know, and you know, be, have the coloration of uh, the state clamping and or gagging the citizens. But I want you to address something. Is fake news restricted to individuals or sometimes the state too can publish? Let me tell you, if fake news is prevalent today, it's because the state has failed to do the proper thing. It's failed to set the proper example of setting out correct news. Mm. And then, uh, I mean, 
And the, one of the best forms of correct news on the part of the state is to enforce the laws, state the law the way it is, and enforce it the way it is. And now, uh, when the state, particularly the government in this case, circumvents the law, twists the law, and then outrightly disregards the law, that in itself is, no, is sending out the worst form of fake news to the populace. So the populace becomes also, you know, you, you, you know, becomes twisted in its way, in the ways it carries on living. Mm. So, so there is, the, the, to, to whom much is given, much is expected. So there is the responsibility on the part of the state to set the right example. And then the constitution under section 22 states that the press, radio, television, newspapers, and all of such things, do everything you can to expose corruption. Hold the government, I mean, it's clearly there, expose corruption and hold the government accountable. And then, so why is, I mean, who is more afraid of fake news? The laws are there. Anything, any wrong expression against any individual, the individual can sue you, can sue the government, can sue the police, sue anybody that makes any wrong expression, I mean, a wrong statement or false uh, expression against him. The point is that somebody is just afraid because maybe his hands are not clean, or may, he's just afraid to be exposed. Assuming this social media bill and hate speech bill are actually passed, and it becomes you know, a law. If the state publishes information or a governor or anybody in politics that we have paid salaries and they've not paid, is that false information? Of course, yes. Can, who will you be responsible? Will you go and find or jail or prosecute? No, you see, it is not government. enough for something to be wrong, for an information to be wrong. It is whether it creates in law what we call a course of action. Did it, is it, did it as a result of the fact that government said it has paid salaries where it has not paid? And I believe the news that it has been, government has paid. And then I went to borrow money. All the money I had saved, I went to spend it. Mm -hmm. And then two weeks later, the government has not paid. I will sue the government for that information. So you can actually sue yes. for information? Yes. So when they say they've done 2,000 kilometers of road and you carry your tape through and you measure it and you find 500 kilometers, you can sue them? Uh, definitely. So long as there is a cause of action. And what is the cause of action? Did you suffer anything mm. as a result of that misinformation? No, it is not necessary. It is not always misinformation. Mm. So, you see, the, you see, the deliberate, the intentional, you know, element mm. in, you know, releasing a, a piece of news that is not true. It's not misinformation. Misinformation can be a mistake. Mm. But, you see, it is untrue. It is fake. It is, it is destructive. So it is that when it causes an individual to make a move that eventually becomes harmful or, you know, that, that, that detracts from him, he can then sue the government. It is because we as a people, our standards, we've been so relegated because, I mean, to, to, to struggling to survive that we forget that there should be some minimum standards of oppression. That are, we cannot be taken for granted. Government cannot lie to us and then go free. When you lie as a government official, you should pay seriously for it. Security operatives and agencies sometimes pick up young people uh, under suspicion of committing crimes or uh, tendency to have a potential to commit crimes. I don't know what that means. You know, but you know, if they accidentally pick somebody up, maybe they pick me up now. Maybe I want to buy something. Okay, let me tell you a particular case of a musician in Nigeria. They picked him up close to his house, and I know they extorted him, but that's another story. And imagine they had published his picture. On social media, like th these agencies sometimes do, that it was suspected to have to be, to be an armed robber. Is that fake news? The reason why government is scared, why government is e e and those in government are jittery, are eager to enforce, I mean, to create new laws, whereas we have existing laws that uh, regulate these things, that tackle these things, is simply because of laziness in enforcing existing laws. So here we have the police. The, when, when the, the perception of the police when they say that, oh, they don't do anything, they don't fight crime, there's security everywhere. And then the concept of play to the gallery now overtakes the, 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 the rank and file. I mean, and the, the, the entire police. That is, mm, let us do something to show that we are working. So they now, they, 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 they now step down the standards. Okay. They now come down from professional uh, standards mm -hmm. in policing. Okay. And then they now say, look, let us just arrest people and show them on television. And to show the, to people that we are working. That human it is 
it is violently against the, 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 the right of an individual, especially in Nigeria, where there is presumption of innocence. In Nigeria, you are always innocent until a court proves that you are guilty. So, putting my picture because they suspected me to be a Yahoo it, boy. It is so Yahoo destructive, man. they should also eventually put your picture and announce to the world, buy full, uh, pages, uh, full, full pages of a newspaper and tell the world that this man that we, we, we once showed on television that he was uh, being paraded to have been alleged to have uh, committed such and such a crime, this man is, 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 is innocent. They should do that. that is the same thing they should do. And in addition to that, pay money. Oh. Pay serious money. Well, finally, let me ask you this question. Nobody will really be carrying for If you want to know how much money the local government has spent on road, nobody will worry now. Is freedom of information be working? Yes or no? Just to round up. No, we're not talking about it. Freedom of information be. Is it working? It's right. being frustrated. It's a very good law. So if you ask me whether it's working, it ought to work, but it's being frustrated. And on that note, we're going to go on a short break and we'll continue this show. Fake news show. We're still very much here. Don't go anywhere. I see the heart. Stay with us. I saw a five-year-old boy that has hypertension and stroke. Due to the fact that he forgot to do his assignment. Ah, 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 I'm sure some people don't think before spreading rumors or fake news. Because thinking for them is like hibernation mood. Don't you know misinforming people has a very, very great negative effect? Please, don't be an economic waste. Don't be that person that forgot to pay his or her brain bees. Don't use your mouth that is shapeless like a concave polygon to spread fake news up and down. Verify from reliable sources before you say anything. Be double, double sure. Don't be that person with a brain that is on vacation. Say no to misinformation, rumors, and stop spreading fake news. Welcome back, to no be small matter. Hey, <laughs> people blow the heart. <laughs> Asking the heart for this episode. <laughs> Social media be the thing people. The thing they people mind. It's a Nigerian, I don't joke. But people, they savage for Twitter, they savage for Instagram. Okay, they don't mess with their social media. Nigerians know they play on social media matter. You know, if you blame them, one of the few places where they talk with that now, you know. Hey, hey, hey. Social media be like the law. You heard what the uh, political analyst in the house said. And uh, what are your thoughts? Let's know what you think. Um, at the point of this um, program, this recording, the social media bill had uh, gone through a public hearing and it doesn't look like it's going to go any further from there. So we can safely say, yeah, that's victory in some sense. But the conversation still continues. Sanitizing social media, is there a need for it? The existing laws ag against libel and uh, defamation, are they enough? Is it fair? Is it right? Is it democratically correct for security operators to pick people up because of their opinion on, space, on, on social media? Are we supposed to be more responsible and considerate? And do, should we know that putting information that is inaccurate or inciting out there can cause chaos? These are the things we need to consider. If it's fake news, if it's disinformation or misinformation, be responsible. Join the campaign. Don't spread hate. Spread hate. Don't spread fake news. And if you are a leader, are you transparent? Are you using social media the right way? Or is it just during election? You just use it to hire people and gather votes and uh, gather votes and gather sympathy. But when election come and go, finish. They can't see your red light again hmm? until the next four years. They are watching you. They are watching you. You come back again after four years. People are getting smarter. No more monkey in the dory. Everybody is getting smarter now. One of these days, mm -hmm. people will get smarter than you think. All right, guys. Thank you very much for staying with us on Fake News Show. We have more for you. Don't go anywhere. You don't cast. Waiting cast. We don't bust them. Now, Fake News. Check out these stories. And let's know what you think. CDD West Africa is busting the stories. CDD Fact Check Report. Fake News Alert. Fact checkers at the CDD can confirm that the funeral of 200 people did not take place in a single cemetery in Kano on Wednesday, April 22, 2020. The report, which had already gone viral, is fake. CDD uses this opportunity to caution the general public against peddling fake news. CDD Fact Check Report. Fake news alert. Was money belonging to Mangu found at the Koyi Cemetery? Fact checkers at the CDD can confirm that no money belonging to Ibrahim Mangu was found in the Koyi Cemetery. Pictures used online were manipulated to disinform the general public. CDD therefore urges members of the public to always verify all claims before disseminating them. 
Welcome back. You don't cast. You don't see. Say you don't cast. So you see all the story. We don't boss. We don't cast. Cast and I don't boss. That's why you have to be responsible. The way you use information and the way you you spread information before you spread that news. Before you carry that rumor, ask yourself: If you were the victim, would you do it? Are you responsible with information that comes your way? Do you verify your source of information? If you're a journalist, have you done due diligence on your WhatsApp group? Do you ask questions? Where is this from? Who said it? Where was it said? When was it said? Why was it said? To whom was it said? Do you ask those questions or you just carry this because it's sweet? You not send until you come your turn, have you? Be responsible. Join the campaign. Join the fight against misinformation and disinformation. Either you're a leader or you're the lead. We're all prone to misinformation and disinformation. Do your best. Do your part. Stop fake news. Stop rumors. Stop disinformation. It's harmful. It has been proven. We have said it on this show. What do you want again? What? We have said it. All right. On behalf of the team, the entire cast and crew uh, that made this production possible, uh, I want to thank you for joining us on this episode of Fake News Show. I'm Frank Donga, your host. Don't forget, CDD West Africa, this show is that initiative supported by USAID and NDI. Uh, thank you for watching this. Join the campaign. Hashtag Stop Fake News. Hashtag Fake News Show. Send us a message on CDD West Africa on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Let us know your thoughts. Thank you and see you next week on Fake News Show. <laughs>